There is an excellent country in Europe called Belarus. This place is also known as the Republic of Belarus. As many of you already know, Belarus is one of the former Soviet Union countries. Geographically today, it is situated in the northern part of Europe. In fact, the country shares its land borders with Poland to the west, Lithuania and Latvia to the north, and Ukraine and Russia to the east and south. Of course, the territorial extent of this country cannot be compared with Russia. However, if we evaluate the country within the scope of Europe, it can be said that it has a surface area of 207,600 square kilometers, larger than many European countries. In this area, it has a population of approximately 9.5 million, which is quite comfortable. Therefore, there is no shortage of people in the country and consequently no chaos. Furthermore, as you can see from the map, Belarus has no coastline to the sea. Its lands consist of many flat terrains and extensive swampy areas. In fact, nearly 40% of the country's territory is covered by forests and lakes. In the end, Belarus has a completely land-focused structure caught between Russia and Europe. In the past, the country was divided several times by empires such as Russia, Poland and Austria. When we come to the First World War, Belarus was under German occupation. However, Germany's loss in World War I led to its withdrawal from Belarus. In fact, both the German occupations and the opportunity created by the internal problems of the Russian Empire allowed Poland to annex part of Belarus Western lands. Afterwards, the country joined the Soviet Union with its existing territories. This country, like almost every Soviet Union country, took control in 1991 and declared its independence. Today, Belarus is an independent state but remains Russia's closest ally under any circumstances and conditions. The people of Belarus are closer to Russia in terms of language and common heritage. For instance, over 80% of the population is clearly Orthodox. The numbers of Catholics and other faiths in the country are very low compared to the Orthodox. As you know, in the heart of Europe, the proportion of Catholics is much higher compared to the Orthodox. Moreover, the number of Belarusians who speak Belarusian and Russian is much less compared to Russia. Therefore, in almost every aspect, Belarus is a country with a common heritage with Russia. Today, Belarus is progressing towards becoming a modern state. Belarus, like most countries, can be reached by plane. There are direct flights to the capital Minsk from various places around the world throughout the year. The good news is that regardless of your passport's color, you can enter Belarus without the hassle of getting a visa. However, if you stay in the country for more than five days, you are required to register your address. According to Belarusian laws, you also need to get health insurance when entering the country. This is because if you experience any health issues during your stay, the country doesn't automatically cover these expenses. If you want to go to Belarus, not just for tourism and cultural purposes, but also to work or live, then you would need to go through a bit more of a process. You'll need to make applications through the relevant embassies and consulates and be patient while waiting for them to be processed. For a long-term stay, you'll need a residence permit. Two main opportunities can help with this. The first is to marry a Belarusian citizen officially. After marriage, you can rent a house and work in Belarus. The other is to get an invitation from a registered business in Belarus where you'll be working. If you manage to secure a job there, obtaining a residence permit will be much faster and easier. However, Belarus remains a vibrant country in terms of its entertainment culture. Yet there's one issue to note the climate. If you're not fond of cold weather, be aware that in Belarus, most of the year can be quite chilly. Particularly in January, average temperatures can drop to the minus 20s and winters can be harsh. Therefore, people often visit Belarus in spring and September to avoid the extreme cold. All right, let's delve deeper into life in Belarus, starting with finances. The country uses the Belarusian ruble and the current minimum wage is around $135 equivalent to about 340 rubles. In terms of minimum wages, Belarus's salaries are lower than many places in the world. However, the majority of people in the country do not earn such a low wage. When tax deductions and withholdings are considered, the average take-home pay for a working individual in Belarus is approximately $400. 
In local markets, the per kilogram price for fruits and vegetables rarely goes below 10 rubles. 10 Belarusian rubles is roughly equivalent to $3. The reason behind these relatively high prices is that most of these products are imported from warmer regions. For instance, instead of buying one kilogram of eggplant, people in Belarus can get one kilogram of ground beef or chicken breast. This is an enticing detail for those who enjoy meat. So if you plan to move to Belarus, be prepared to tighten your belt economically at first. Afterward, you'll need to find a job that pays around $400 to $500, which is approximately 1,500 rubles minimum. But even with that money, it might be challenging to move into your own place. Currently, average apartment prices in Belarus are not below $400. Additionally, your monthly expenses for electricity and water would amount to around $50 on average. In fact, these same apartments cost less than half the price just a year ago. However, due to the Ukraine-Russia situation, Belarus experienced an influx of migrants in a year. And as is happening worldwide, prices have increased significantly. What's more, these apartments are not brand new. Many of Belarus's apartments are in buildings that are at least 20, 30 years old. If you had to describe Belarus in one sentence in terms of its leaders, buildings and vehicles and restrictions, you might say it's a place where modern life coexists with old rules. If we need to give examples of the restrictions in the country, animal lovers might find it a bit frustrating. As I mentioned, Belarus is famous for its lakes and natural parks. However, you can't take your dog with you for a walk in public parks. Riding a bike in a park is also not allowed. You absolutely can't consume alcohol or even smoke in public places like parks. For example, you and a friend decide to sit in a park and enjoy some sunflower seeds. You might think it's okay, because there are a couple of ladies sitting nearby, so nothing will happen. But the moment you commit this offense, you realize those ladies are actually undercover police officers. Actually, you can look at this in a positive way. Thanks to these kinds of restrictions, the country is incredibly clean. Not only in parks, but even on the streets, you won't find any trash. Moreover, if you don't have a high-paying job in the country, you can't make ends meet on an average income and an average job in Belarus by yourself. With a monthly income of $400 to $500, even covering your rent and food costs is challenging. Beyond that, you won't have any budget left for entertainment, clothing, or tech shopping. The culinary culture in the country mainly consists of pizza-like snacks in restaurants. If you're a Muslim, more than 80% of the meat products in restaurants contain pork. Therefore, you should always inquire about the contents before ordering. Even if you don't speak Russian or Belarusian, with a bit of English, you can manage to communicate your concerns. If you ask if there's anything other than pizza, you'll quickly notice that people are consuming raw fish products almost everywhere. So anyone wanting to live in Belarus cannot escape from dishes like sushi, which involve raw fish. Due to not being very friendly to a capitalist system, creating commercial enterprises with high profitability and substantial earnings seems challenging here. Even if you adapt to the local cuisine after a while, in Belarus, you can hardly find a regular meal for less than $10 at an ordinary restaurant. Plus, if you order a soup, they take about 30 minutes to serve it. So if you are impatient, you might get quite bored in this country. If you express disapproval of their lifestyle, you'll end up offending them. Regardless of the situation, they expect courtesy and respect from you at all times. It's not just courtesy and respect. They also expect a tip, typically around 10% of the meal cost. Moreover, you might come across many vehicles that date back to the Soviet era and are still in use. Belarus, being a relatively new state, has a long way to go in terms of development. Interestingly though, the majority of the workforce in the country is composed of women. In practically every field, you can see plenty of women working. For instance, if you visit the local markets and take a quick look around, you'll notice that almost all the stall owners are women. There is a bit of a culture shock regarding market stalls. You shouldn't try to haggle with sellers in Belarus. They absolutely detest bargaining. Belarusian men emigrate to other European countries or Russia because incomes are low and the cost of living is high in the country. 
They find jobs abroad and send money back to their families in Belarus. Therefore, when you're traveling in Belarus, you'll see more women than men and the ratio is quite significant. If you're thinking about establishing a social circle there, men might initially appear a bit more formal and reserved. On the other hand, Belarusian women tend to be warmer and more helpful compared to Belarusian men. Perhaps one of the best things about the country is that there's no racism against foreign citizens. Belarusian women, in particular, are quite positive about meeting new people. Foreign men also find Belarusian women quite attractive. In summary, while Belarus is undoubtedly clean in terms of nature and its people are generally well-groomed, the high cost of living and strict rules didn't particularly appeal to me. However, I still recommend going there at least once due to the advantage of being able to visit a European country without a visa. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.